Hey, I'm Andrew Skirko with Sierra Designs. I'm gonna show you over the next couple of minutes how to poop in the woods and how to give yourself a backcountry bidet. This is a really important topic. If you do this right, it's good for you. It's good for everyone else who uses the environment that you're in, and it's good for the backcountry as well. Let's get moving. Sometimes it is, but pooping generally is not an emergency. Generally, you have some advanced warning. So for me personally, uh, it's pretty reliable that after drinking a cup of coffee in the morning, I'm gonna need to go poop. At that point, I go look for my bathroom kit. And for me, this consists of a baggie of toilet paper. And I budget myself four squares of toilet paper per day. And I also bring along some hand sanitizer. Conventional wisdom would have you carrying a trowel. I generally don't find one of these to be necessary if I do everything else right. And then if you're into the optional backcountry bidet, you're gonna want a bottle full of water. Hard side bottles work better than the types of bottles that you have to squeeze. Finding a place to poop, it's like real estate. Location, location, location. You wanna find a spot that's totally random, not a place where someone's gonna to wanna to walk or camp or sit down. You need to be at least 200 feet away from water. You also want to find a place that has some biological richness to it to help break, things break down. And finally, find a place that's soft. It will make your job digging a lot easier. All right, big relief. I have found a good spot. While I was walking, I took the opportunity to collect some natural materials. I collected some sticks. I still have my toilet paper with me as well. And I also collected some rocks. I could have grabbed some vegetation as well, but I figured since these will get the job done, there wasn't any sense in killing some plants. Proper leave no trace protocol is that you dig a cat hole six to eight inches deep. Even with a trowel, if you pick a bad spot, that's gonna be really difficult to do. And if you pick a good spot, you actually don't need a trowel to do it. This spot here, it's so soft because there's so much pine duff in here that I'm just gonna be able to use the back of my heel. I've got a nice cat hole at this point, it's time to get into position. There are a few different ways to do this. Some people, they like to use an assist, such as this right here. Other people, they like to clown it up a little bit and they do, they do the orangutan hang. But personally, I've always found that a simple squat works pretty well. If you're new at this, you might wanna consider taking off a pant leg, if not two. As you get better at it, you can just drop your pants down to your knees and get on with it. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do my business right into the hole. And I'm gonna start wiping by using these natural materials. Natural materials are great to use because they can do a lot of that early heavy lifting. And it's a natural part of the environment. It's not something that I'm gonna to need to pack out later. So again, I'm gonna go through, I've got like a half a dozen sticks here and I can just keep on going. I don't need to wipe very hard. I got some rocks, I could use some leaves, maybe some pine cones, and all this can go straight into the hole. At the very end, I have a square of toilet paper that I can use just to polish the rear view mirror. And at that point, I'm gonna have this dirty piece of toilet paper. Proper leave no trace protocol is to pack it out. And this is a wise thing to do if you're in a high use area or an environment with, that's very arid and doesn't break down things very quickly. Uh, I think if you're in a really rich ecosystem, so like the temperate rainforest, the Pacific Northwest in a really remote part of it, a square of toilet paper is gonna break down pretty quickly. It shouldn't be, um, I don't think that's gonna be a, a hugely offensive. If you do need to pack out your toilet paper, just have a Ziploc bag handy. At this point, I've done all my business. So I'm gonna go ahead and stand up. Wasn't that satisfying? At this point, we have our poop in the hole. We've got this pile of debris. I need to cover this all up. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a stick and I'm gonna stir it up like a stew. And that just helps to put some biological uh, organisms inside the poop to help it break down faster. Push it all in the hole. And now I just cover this. If you are in a high use area, the last thing you should do before you go is mark the spot. And this is not a treasure. This means do not dig here. 
The last step before I leave this area is that I'm gonna clean my hands. I like to use hand sanitizer. Just a little squirt. And make sure to get these critical fingers when you're cleaning your hands. Now, not necessarily immediately after I poop, but at least once a, like once a day, every other day or so, I'll give myself a backcountry bidet. Because the techniques that I've just shown you right here, they get you pretty clean, but not shower clean. So when I'm hiking hard and I'm sweating and I'm in a dirty environment, I'm sort of prone to just getting dirty back there. So by giving myself a backcountry bidet, I get really good and clean. Here's the way this works. You designate one hand for your water bottle, one hand that's gonna become dirty. Take off both pant legs, go back into the squatting position, take your water bottle, and just start pouring it, tilt it this way. Water will start coming down. Grab some of this water and splash this area here. No, and actually, don't just splash, make contact. Scrub, get this area good and clean. Splashing isn't enough. Go through your entire water bottle, 20 ounces is about right. At that point, I'm gonna have a clean hand and a dirty hand. I grab my hand sanitizer again, put some in that hand, maybe a one-handed wash, then get my other hand in here. At this point, my hands are good and clean. I feel light, I feel good. In fact, I feel really good now. Happy pooping.